Welcome, welcome back to our farmhouse. This week, I'm just going to share with you some things that I've been doing, foods I've been cooking, some decorating, all of the beautiful fall colors and cozy flavors. I have been slowly plucking the pumpkins off of the porch that are decor to bring in and cook. This is a Jardale variety. My son thinks he's going to go plant some. Haven't told him that. He really can't plant pumpkins this time of year and expect them to grow, but they may freeze over and then come back next year. We've had many volunteer pumpkins. This one was a little bit unripe still, a little bit green. Still tasted great, but was very difficult to get into. So I'm taking a couple of segments and peeling it and dicing it to put into a pumpkin frittata. And then the rest I'm going to roast. I can scrape the baked pumpkin off of the skin and then put it into a pumpkin soup or make pumpkin puree for a pumpkin pie or pumpkin muffins. I have a recipe for pumpkin soup over on the website. You can go to farmhousehambun.com. But one segment of it I am going to completely peel so that I can use it for this recipe. It's another one I recently have been testing out for the blog. It's very delicious. I'm using garlic, onion, fresh pumpkin, bacon, feta, cheddar cheese. You cannot go wrong with those combinations of flavor, especially this time of year. Makes for a cozy meal, especially alongside some sourdough bread. So for this one, I am dicing up one onion, two cloves of garlic, two cups of peeled and diced pumpkin, and then I'm going to cook in a 12 inch cast iron skillet, six pieces of bacon until they're nice and crispy. I'll remove that bacon and then cook the vegetables in the bacon grease. As you can hear Victor, he is snoring right next to me. <laughs> For the egg portion of this, I'm doing 12 eggs, a half a cup of milk, a half a teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon pepper, whisking that all together. Then after I have the vegetables nice and soft cooked in that bacon grease, I will add in the egg mixture and then a half a cup of feta cheese, a half a cup of cheddar cheese. I like a sharp cheddar. You could use really a mozzarella, any cheese would work. And then top it with the bacon after I cut it all up. This one, because the this particular bacon we had was a little bit on the greasy side, was a little bit greasy. We probably should have drained off half of the bacon fat and reserved it for something else. I do like using bacon fat to fry eggs. If it's not super strong, you could use it in a pie crust. Lard's delicious in a pie crust, but usually you need to cook it a little bit slower so it doesn't have a very strong flavor. But it's good for sauteing uh, potatoes, for making crispy potatoes. I actually just did that recently. I had a whole bunch of bacon grease. I just left it right in my cast iron skillet, heated it up, added in some diced potatoes. Now, people in the house might think that you made bacon and might be disappointed when they find out that it's just potatoes cooked in bacon. I also topped this with some fresh parsley. We still have that going strong. It takes a couple frosts to kill it, but it'll probably be gone soon. I'm enjoying that freshness that we're still able to have right now. I took a couple of photos for this frittata. There's a printable version of the recipe over on the blog. You could also use sweet potatoes or butternut squash in the place of the pumpkin. In my last video, I had a lot of you ask why the hedge apples? The reason for those is just to bring some color into our home. Just like we have green and dark brown and pink and white and light blue eggs that I put in wicker and wire baskets all around our kitchen and pantry. I also love flower arrangements and I feel the same about the pretty colors of the leaves and the hedge apples and the walnuts that are all over our yard. So I don't have any real purpose. There is some, I guess you could call it a wives tale, that hedge apples can help keep pests away. Things like cockroaches, spiders, crickets. The jury is still out on whether or not that is actually effective. For me personally, I just thought that they were pretty. Normally I just ignore them, but this year I decided to use them for a bit of decor. Through all the seasons, this is how I like to decorate. I like to bring in the colors that are outside, whether that be from food, like a basket of apples in the pantry, displaying the harvest throughout the fall with pumpkins and leaves, drying out herbs and flowers for all throughout the winter. 
I also want to go get some cedar branches from my parents' farm. We don't have any on our property, but I love those little blue berries that I'm going to bring in whenever it's time to decorate for Christmas. And then in the spring, there are different flowers that come up each week, sometimes just wildflowers, sometimes there's something that we've planted, but it naturally evolves throughout the year and helps give a fresh new look to inside spaces too. I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, Thread Up, which is the world's largest online thrift store. Thread Up has a brand new feature on their website where you can share your favorites and others can actually shop your favorites. Today I'm going to be sharing some finds that I picked up from Thread Up, but I'm also going to be sharing a link in the description box below so that you can head over and see all of the things that I picked out so that if you like the items I'm going to show you here, you can check out those. There's a lot more of the same kind of look I was going for this fall. The first thing I'm going to share with you is this sweater by J. Crew. It's a really nice sweater. It has some wool, some alpaca. It has an estimated retail price of $109 with a thread up price of $29.99. It's really cozy, really nice. And my favorite thing about it is how well it goes with this skirt. This skirt is by Reformation. It's stretchy, so it's really comfortable but it also looks really cute with sweaters and boots. I've also paired it with a tank top and my baby wrap and then a cardigan over top of it. There's really nothing that I've worn it with that I didn't like it. I've worn it on casual days. I've worn it to church. I get things like this that I really love and then I just wear them over and over again. And that is currently how I'm feeling about this skirt. Next thing I wanna show you is this tank top by Madewell. I really like the extra details of this. It has elastic at the wrists. It has a little ribbed detail. This one has an estimated retail price of $95 and a thread up price of $27.99. This sweater is by Universal Threads. I always love Universal Threads, so whenever I do thread up, I just get on and search my favorite brands. It has an estimated retail price of $25 and a thread up price of $14.99. It's just cozy, perfect fall staple. This one actually still had the tags on it. It is by J. Crew. I love that it is linen. I think that it looks really cute with a sweater and boots. Closing this out with another J. Crew find from Thread Up, a beautiful knit sweater and reminding you to check out the link in the description box below to shop all of my favorites. I added so many different things that I loved on there and use the code farmhouse40 to get 40% off your order, which is an absolutely amazing deal. There are so many great brands on there for way better prices than buying brand new. Plus you don't have to worry about the waste of buying something that isn't secondhand. Again, check out the link in the description box below for all of my favorites. Don't forget to use the code farmhouse40 Thank you so much to Thread Up for sponsoring today's video. My dad recently went up to Canada and got a moose. And so we have been having the wonderful opportunity to cook with lots of venison. I'm pretty familiar with cooking with venison every year here in Missouri. Somebody gets a deer. If it's not Luke, it's my dad or someone else who doesn't necessarily need all of the meat. And so I'm pretty comfortable and familiar with cooking with it. One of my favorite ways to use ground venison is in a meatloaf. Lately, I have been making my meatloaves without using an additional bowl. So instead of mixing it up in a large bowl, I just take the meat and put it in my nine by 13 dish, add a little salt, pepper, ketchup, and my homemade sourdough breadcrumbs. I've shared about that here before. Basically, I take leftover bits of sourdough bread. This particular jar is made from some dinner rolls that we had, didn't eat all of, biscuits, half of an everything sourdough bagel, some little parts of a sandwich bread and some artisan bread. I had so many random just bits of bread left over. So I cut them all in cubes, put them on a baking sheet, toasted them in the oven and then blended them in a blender and put them in a jar in my pantry for occasions such as this. I also add about one egg per pound of meat here, I believe I had, uh, who knows, about three pounds of meat, I think. I cut one package in half because I didn't think I'd be able to fit four pounds in this nine by 13 dish. We have guests coming tonight to celebrate a birthday in our family, kind of an impromptu visit. 
So I'm just making what I already had thought out, which was this ground mousse. Luke brought in lots of vegetables from the garden. We have these yellow summer squash, green beans. Our garden at this exact moment is still producing, but we have a frost in the forecast. It's actually one of the latest frosts that I can remember around here. We can almost guarantee a frost in late October, but this year it is arriving in early November. We've really enjoyed having this extension on our garden season and it's kept producing. Luke put in a bunch of things in August, like carrots, some of those yellow squash, the green beans. We pulled out some beds that, I forget what was in it, but something had ran its course. So we put those in in August and here it is late October, early November, and we are still reaping the benefits of it. We are also still getting so many herbs, which is something I'm going to sincerely miss whenever the frost does finally come and wipe them all out. This is a good example of simple meals that I try to do here more often than not. Some kind of protein, whether that's chicken or ground beef, fish, moose, deer, whatever you got. Whole bunch of veggies, roasted or boiled. We're doing the green beans boiled with butter. Sauteed in butter, like we're doing here with the squash. It keeps mealtime simple when you think about that very simple formula. Protein, whole bunch of veggies, maybe throw in a potato. If you had some bread rising, that's always good too. Today I made a sourdough discard bread for the blog. So I had that ready to go. I was so glad I had all of this stuff prepared for this very impromptu dinner. The kids found a pawpaw tree on our property. I don't know why we never came across that before. Pawpaw is a fruit that's native here. It's native in a lot of parts of the US, I do believe. It has the taste sort of like a cross between a mango and a banana. I'd say the texture is really similar to a banana, but then it has also sort of a tropical flavor. So my daughters and I are cutting them up and I'm experimenting with a few things for the blog. I did a pawpaw smoothie recipe, a pawpaw jam, and a pawpaw bread. We had a ton of fun with these in the kitchen. There are a lot more things that I want to make, but it's gonna have to wait till next year. I didn't get to all of it, and I believe the pawpaws are now done. So I have a whole list going in my Trello board, which is where I plan things for my blog and my YouTube channel of things that I wanna try for next year. Pawpaw bread is a lot like banana bread. In fact, you could just sub banana out in this recipe and it could be still very delicious. Before the pawpaw bread, I did one and a half cups of pawpaw pulp, a half a cup of melted butter, a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a cup of sugar, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla, and one and a half cups of all-purpose flour in a 350 degree oven, just in a standard loaf pan. It's a little bit tricky to remove the flesh from a pawpaw because there are so many seeds in it. We had the same experience when we were in Hawaii. Last March, we went there. It was beautiful, tropical. We were coming off of winter here. It was still very cold at home, and so it was wonderful to enjoy that weather. We went to the farmer's market and picked up a whole bunch of fruits that you can only get in tropical places, which we are very far from here in Missouri. A lot of them were very delicious, but you could see why they aren't shipping them all over the place because they're very inconvenient fruits. It was a novelty to try all of the things. We went back to our Airbnb and we made a big board, like a charcuterie style board with different meats and cheeses and baked goods that we found at the farmer's market in Kauai and then all of the native fruits that were locally grown. It was so fun, but so many of the fruits were just very hard to get into. That's kind of how I feel about pawpaws. I wouldn't want them all the time, but what a fun fall tradition if you do live in an area that has native pawpaws to find them, pick them, 
and do something with them. I like introducing my kids to things like this as well, something that's kind of novel, something that maybe you haven't heard of. It's part of our homeschool routine to interact with nature in this way and then figure out what to do with the thing that we find or cultivate. Right now, it is walnut season. Our tree is producing more this year than ever. We gather them all up in bags and take them to a local place where you can sell things like that. The kids have a blast. Obviously, it amounts to next to no money for the effort, but the kids really think it's something. Going to make another meal straight from the garden with what we have left of the garden produce. So many peppers and the best thing to make with peppers is some kind of stuffed pepper. We rely on this a lot in the fall. We have a few tomatoes left. I have a few canned tomatoes. I don't have enough tomatoes from the garden to exclusively rely on that. We have plenty of onions. Luke and I were in the garden today thinking about what went wrong with our tomatoes. I've had trouble like this in the past, but this year especially, we just didn't get that many. We had a short amount of time where we were getting so many tomatoes, we didn't know what to do with them. That's when I started canning them. And then they just shut off like a faucet and we had no more. And so I've already been tapping into my canned tomatoes. I get a straggler here and there, but next year I hope to do better because tomatoes is my favorite thing. If I could grow one thing very well in the garden and only one thing, it would be tomatoes followed by garlic, onions, and herbs. Honestly, that's all I really need in the garden. I could just pick up the amount of peppers that I want from the farmer's market. I wouldn't need this quantity. But this year, what took off the most was peppers, and the biggest straggler was the tomatoes. I hate to say it. We've been fermenting tons of peppers, freeze-drying tons of them, eating as many as possible, I just cut them in half and roast them with some olive oil and salt. And then for the filling, I brown up some ground beef. I get this from my sister's farm. Shout out to my sister's farm. I've mentioned it on here a few times. She is over at newhartfordfarmco.com. She has started shipping her pastured chicken, I believe beef boxes and pork boxes. I get all of my meat when she has it. Um, she's just now had another pork harvest, so we'll be back in pork. When she doesn't, I get it from fed from the farm. They also ship. And then when she is back to harvesting pork, I fill the freezer with a whole hog. Anyways, it's all pastured organic. I love having that source nearby, but if you're in the central US, she will ship to you also. I'm adding some onions and some of my canned tomatoes to my beef, letting that simmer for a good long while, adding salt, pepper, spices, like cumin, garlic powder, chili powder, and some rice. And then once the peppers are nice and soft, I will fill it with my beef mixture, top with cheddar cheese, and then just bake it until the cheese is melted. Everything's already cooked, so I don't have to worry about putting it in the oven very long after that. Another simple meal for the books. To me, stuffed peppers are kind of like chili, just put together in a bit of a different way. Swap the beans for rice. I use the same spices like cumin and chili. I have my tomatoes, my beef, my peppers, onions, the cheese that you normally top it with. This would even be delicious with sour cream and cornbread like I normally do with chili. You can get away with this on a warmer day. It doesn't have as much of the cozy feel as chili, but very similar taste profile. And my entire family loves chili. And so they also love this. Today I'm going to use up some more of our eggplant from the garden. They are dwindling down, but we do still have quite a few. I've made a lot of eggplant parmesan and I've diced them up, sauteed them and put them in different soups and stews and chilies. I can even hide them in different casseroles. Today I'm going to do similar to eggplant parmesan where you fry them, but instead of layering them like a lasagna with sauce and Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese, 
I'm just going to serve them as a side dish to a different protein. So sticking with my whole vegetable protein formula for a meal, I'm going to just serve the eggplant as that side with a little bit of freshness to it. I have some bread that I toasted up, but I hadn't yet blended into the breadcrumbs. So I'm just doing that, blending them up, adding a little bit of salt. Sometimes I add some herbs to them to flavor them. These have become a staple in our kitchen. We use them all the time. They make for such an easy breading. We made some halibut yesterday. It was so delicious. I used paprika, salt, and then I made a garlic butter with some fresh garlic that I infused in butter for several hours. It was really good. I really liked it. But then I got to thinking how good that would have also been breaded and fried in some pork fat or beef fat with my sourdough breadcrumbs. We don't do a lot of fish here in our family, but I'm trying to incorporate that too, just as a little bit of a variety, something I used to do more and haven't done it in quite a while. I hope you enjoyed going along with me for some fall homemaking. If you haven't yet subscribed, I make videos like this every week. A lot of seasonal things, sharing what I'm cooking, how I'm decorating our farmhouse, homemaking. I would love for you to join me. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.